Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of What Can Contrast Do? Um, this was my short series of videos where I took viewer questions about the new Citadel contrast paints and made some quick tutorial videos. So today, um, I had four new questions. Uh, this is probably the, the third one down of those questions. And this was, how does the new um, Citadel contrast paint look? over a metallic base coat. So I grabbed some Space Marines and you can tell how, how long how long of these Space Marines sat waiting for me to paint them longingly in a box. Um, since the first Apocalypse launch would be the answer. I'm pretty sure these were for my Raven, oh, probably actually, probably since the fourth edition Space Marine Codex is how long these miniatures have waited to get painted because I built them, they're on 25 mil bases first of all, which gives away how, how long ago I built them. Um, their bolters are all hanging off, <laughs> which means I cared enough to not glue the bolters on first. That's probably because these were going to be in White Dwarf uh, at some point, because I did the North American Dawn of War battle report with my buddy Lionel um, with the 4th edition Space Marine Codex, which we didn't actually have. We had the beta version of it because it changed later on because <laughs> I gave my guy too many relics. Um, and uh, and yeah, and these were supposed to be Raven Guard. This was the first Raven Guard I was painting with my Raven Guard army. So um, these have been primed with the old Air Runefang steel, just so that I'm I'm trying to stick with Citadel colors here, even though I'm doing a variety of like model manufacturers, because if you're going to a place that sells these paints, you can get the the complementary colors too. Uh, although I own thousands of paints from all over the place. Uh, so for these ones, um, we've got three Space Marines here, just regular tactical Marines with some steel. Uh, and the three chapters we're gonna try out today are going to be Dark Angels. They're going to be, because this, this is a popular color. And I mean, this could also be um, Salamanders or a variety of other colors. And with the metallic underneath, this is a really good horse heresy style. Whoops, that's not the right color. I grabbed the Militarum one, showing you literally the wrong color. There it is, Dark Angels. <laughs> We're going to try some of the turquoise, so Aethromatic Blue, um, which I think is going to be a good turquoise to put over top of this to try and do some um, Pre-Heresy Alpha Legion. And we're going to use the Flesh Terror because it's going to look great for Pre-Heresy Blood Angels or just like a candied Blood Angel color too. Uh, and these are the three I want to try, I think specifically with the Metallics because I think there's some there's some value in uh, showing how, how this is going to turn out. Uh, I might also try Pterodon Turquoise. Should I do Pterodon Turquoise or should I do Aethromatic Blue? I'm gonna tear it on turquoise. I'm gonna try to tear it on turquoise. It's it's we're we're getting our, our red red green blue done here, our RGB colors, which I felt like was gonna be appropriate. And of course, when we're done, we'll throw these on the turntable. I'm using my nice big shade brush, as per usual, and we're just gonna again we're gonna try and avoid all the scully bits and just throw this right over top of a nice airbrush, over top of black primer of some super sweet storm fang no rune fang steel, rune fang steel. The air paint, whatever the, the lighter silver air paint was. I considered doing a darker metallic, but kind of following the touchstone of using these contrast paints, I thought if I used a lighter one, I would get the, the most extreme results. And I mean, I can always do that later, guys. I can, if you want me to do a darker one, I'm not gonna do it now, because that would require digging for more, more unbuilt, or built, built in <laughs> and not made in Space Marines. Uh, and the leaning tower of, of totes full of Space Marine sprues uh, was adventure enough for one morning, but maybe next week I can. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna throw some of this down. And yeah, this is giving me exactly, I, I'm glad I picked this one. This is a bit darker. And having thought about it now, like as I'm talking, I think using the darker metallic color, like if I was gonna pick the colors, Dark Angel Green, the Flesh Terror color, and um, this turquoise are probably a better choice than the lighter versions of these if you're using a lighter base coat. So because I'm using Rune Fang Steel and not like Pig Iron or, uh, Iron Breaker, sorry, Pig Iron's the P3 version of that. Um, this was probably a good idea because it's going to give a better candying effect. And, and even looking at it right now, this is pretty close. I mean, it's not exactly the the Forge World one, but it, for quick and dirty, if you're doing pre-heresy Alpha Legion, this ain't bad. And of course, it's gonna it's gonna change as it dries too, right? So just but just right now, even not dried, this is a pretty pretty nifty overall effect. So let's put him aside into the drying time. Drying times here. Ooh, I did a, I did a, what's his name? Dr. Dealgood reference there. Oh, if people even understand the reference of Dr. Dealgood, that's an even bigger deal. All right, so there we go. So that was uh, Pterodon, Pterodon Turquoise for the first one. Let's try out some flush chair. So let's switch, switch tones from cool to warm. Too close for missiles, switching to guns. And try out this big fellow. 
I've, I've taped off like where the camera is pointing now. Uh, as again, I've never done painting videos before, so I'm literally making this up as I go along. I asked no questions. I just literally jumped in and set my cameras up and tried this out. So uh, hopefully this is alleviating some of the seasickness of the last one, because in the last one, the painting angle was reversed because the camera was in front of me, and I flipped it 180 in editing. In this one, the camera's like over my shoulder, kind of like sitting beside me, as you guys can see right here. Um, and I don't have to flip it, and I'm hoping that people aren't quite as nauseated by the angle. There was something non-Euclidean about the geometry of the last one. Yeah, there's another, another reference. Some, some non-Euclidean geometry. Um, that I think, yeah, this is going to be pretty cool too. This is giving kind of that candied, like you could do that thing in the Forge World style painting with Blood Angels with this, where after you've done this layer of paint, you could go with just like stark silver and bang out the edges to give it a highlight. And you'd get that, I think that same, you could use this for the Thousand Suns, Pre-RC Thousand Suns, um, or Pre-RC Blood Angels, and I think it would look equally good. Uh, there, so this is actually kind of the effect, um, whoops, that yeah, that the Forge World candying paints are gonna give you. Uh, now, a lot of that candying stuff is airbrushed, so it's gonna be faster than doing it this way, but if you're just getting your paints from a GW store and this is like, this is what you have available to you. I would say this is a really easy way of doing it, but you're gonna have to base coat Stormhost Silver, or the, one of the silvers. Um, in this case, it would be the, uh, whatchamacallit, the, uh, the, what did I just do? Runefang Steel. <laughs> I'm, I'm missing all the paint names right now. Runefang Steel to get this effect. But yeah, it's gonna look pretty slick, I think. I, I think I did the right choice picking a lighter color for a metallic underneath, because so far, so good. And we're gonna let that dry too. We'll be able to see how it looks, but it's looking pretty sharp. And then it's just team, team, whatchamacallit, team Dark Angels. And we'll give that a try. That was Warp Lightning, Dark Angels. I literally grabbed three different greens and none of them were right. <laughs> and I got the right one here. I got my Dark Angels, let's try it out. It's, it's really hard, I will mention, it's really hard to tell these paints apart just by looking at them. You really do need to read the labels, because even knowing what they do just by looking at them, like I said, is impossible. Um, so pay attention, you don't grab the wrong paint and slop on the wrong one. You think you're grabbing the right green, and I grabbed the wrong green twice <laughs> before I even got close to the right green. Mm. Yeah, this is pretty slick. I, I'm, I've seen some people talking about doing it over a metallic base coat, but this is definitely um, giving the effect, I think, that, that people want, that Forge World beaten armor effect. Um, it's, uh, it's exactly the kind of armor I did for my Ultramarines. Have you seen my Kill Team of Ultramarines from the Space Marine Heroes box? Um, except I used an airbrush paint. I used the Green Stuff World's uh, air paints, the, the Color Shift paints. I used their Cobalt color, which is like a dark blue. Um, and that's a real, <laughs> it's using the same principles, actually. But it's, a, it's an airbrush paint that goes over a metallic gloss primer. Um, to give that reflective stuff, because if you look at it out of the pot, it's basically colorless. It's a silver with no, no backing to it, and you throw it over top and it gives a shimmer um, over a metallic black. This is doing a very similar effect over a metallic color, as opposed to just a gloss color, because it needs the metallic underneath, but you're just ghost tinting it. And using a tint paint. And that's looking pretty good. I'm, I'd be happy with this if I was doing Dark Angels and I wanted like a, a metallic finish. I really like the Space Marines and Metallic Army. I, I'm, I'm really tempted to actually do a whole army of those Ultramarines. Or at least um, keep building them for Kill Team to like a 20 man roster because it's super, super fun and easy to do too. Doing this like this burnished metallic colored ar armor. And once it, you dry. And there we go, we'll have some, some Dark Angel green over top of metallic. And uh, we'll put these fellas when they're dry on the turntable so you guys can get a look at what they look like when they're all done. And so here's our friend, Mr. Turquoise, using the, um, the new uh, contrast paint, uh, Pterodon Turquoise, uh, after he's had some drying time. Now there's a bit of gloss in the recesses where it's really pooled, but for the most part, he's pretty much as advertised. It's a great Alpha Legion color scheme, um, or if you're doing a homebrew chapter that's in like this metallic, it has preserved a lot of the metallic effect underneath. Um, and I mean, I did this fast, right? But if I was gonna be carefully sort of like mopping up where the, uh, the paint's pooling and stuff as it's drying, I could certainly see it being a lot cleaner than it's dried right now. Hasn't gone too patchy. It's certainly, certainly left the edges all nice and shiny. Um, and who knows, a second coat might, <laughs> I think a second coat might get rid of the metallic underlay 
uh, but it would definitely, if you wanted this to be a bit darker, darken it up and stuff too. And if I go and pick up the highlights, I think this guy will be a good looking, a good looking pre-heresy uh, Alpha Legion fella. So let's take a look at our Blood Angel. All right, so here's Mr. Blood Angel. Um, after he's had some time to dry, obviously some of the recesses in the very bottom there are still a little bit tacky, but I'm not super worried about that. Um, he's again, just like the, uh, the green, they've preserved a lot of what the metallic underlay looks like. So there's a nice shine to the edges. And I think if you did that trick where you picked out the edges of everything with a little silver, like a nice bright silver, like a storm host silver or something like that, you'd get a good, you know, pre-RC Thousand Suns slash Blood Angels slash however I want to do this metallic armor. Um, kind of look to it. Now, do I think you're going to get a better effect out of something like a, uh, one of these transition paints, like the um, the stuff, the green, green stuff world stuff I'm talking about, or some of the, uh, the great um, airbrush paints that you can get from Turbo, was it Turbo Dork, I think does them? They do like a, a great blue and a great red. Probably the airbrushing is going to be cleaner, it's going to be more consistent, it's going to have any, no blotching and you don't have to actually go back and mop up any areas that have kind of pooled and stuff like that. But if you're looking for quick and dirty, this, this is definitely a way of doing it. Now, that being said, I did have to airbrush on the Stormhost Silver, or the, what is it, the Runefang Steel anyway. So, did this really save you any time? If you've already got an airbrush, you're just going to airbrush this regardless. That's up to you. That's your, that's your workflow. <laughs> you tell me. But um, you could even use this over a dry brush, I guess, of silver. So I think you're going to get the effect regardless. And, uh, and it's definitely a, it's a legitimate path to it. You know what I mean? Like there's many roads to the same look and, and, and feel of something. And for someone who doesn't either own an airbrush and just wants to do a dry brush plus this, um, or even someone that doesn't own an airbrush and wants to do it with glazes, this is a legitimate technique. So I don't think that, uh, I don't think that one is, is better than the other, but I question if you have access to one of the tools, why would you use this tool instead? So it looks good, but I don't I don't know that unless you're limited in your resources of what your tools and stuff are, that this is a better way of doing it than let's say airbrushing a candy red on top. So uh, let's take a look at Mr. Dark Angel. And here's our Dark Angel once he's had some time to dry. Once again, same caveat, this stuff takes forever to dry sometimes. And so you can see in the back of his shoulder pad there, there's a little pool of it still that's kind of wet, but it again has preserved a lot of what makes um, the metallics glow. And of course the raised edges and stuff do have a nice kind of tint to them. So um, it's achieved its purpose of giving you a metallic darker green with kind of how it's the edges. I think of the three of them, the one, the Alpha Legion one with the turquoise is still my favorite. The red would be second, this one would probably be third. Mostly because there are some spots that have gone kind of mad on him. And I did a pretty even, a pretty even Steven base coat. Like I'm not, uh, I'm not, I'm pretty sure I didn't, I didn't overdo it in any areas. And, uh, and I'm not, I'm, I'm not super satisfied with just the consistency of it overall. So that could be the paint, that could be me. I mean, I'm going, I'm going fairly quickly. I'm not taking time to mop stuff up, but of the three of them, I was gonna rank them, I'd say, uh, probably turquoise red green <laughs> for, for this effect. Uh, and if you're doing this stuff, of course, for like pre salamanders or something where you want to have a dark green, um, you could clearly, you could clear, you could clearly either do this with an airbrush again and like a candy paint, um, or you could use this as a technique if you wanted to dry brush the silver on and then go over top of it with the, uh, the, the lovely new contrast. So, uh, of the three candidates, uh, I haven't done the ultramarine blue, but but I will. <laughs> I mean, I've done it. Thing is, I, I have no, I'm already super happy with the green stuff world cobalt. So I don't know if I do this, but if people want to see the ultra green blue, I can, I can show it to you in a different video. Um, but yeah, we're off to the, the last one, which is, is there a different way of doing white power armor than apothecary white? Cause folks weren't super excited about apothecary white. Um, and having seen it in action, I had an idea that you could definitely use the new contrast medium to thin down basilicum gray and space of gray to get the same effect. And that'll be the next video. So we'll see you for that one.